In the autumn of 2013, we experienced one of the strongest storms to hit the south of England for many years. And here's its contribution to my back garden. I was out filming in the storm and the experience reminded me of what I'm sometimes told by those who don't share my Christian faith. What they say is, well, I can't possibly believe what you believe because what you believe isn't tangible. It can't be seen. After all, no one can see God, can they? Well, at the moment, no. But I can't see the wind, yet I can experience and see all the effects of what the wind does to things. I was nearly swept off my feet trying to get this footage. I may not see the wind, but I can see its effects very clearly. It's exactly the same with God. I may not see him, but I can see his Holy Spirit at work in my life and in the lives of others. After the storm, there were many parts of Felixstowe where the landscape changed. The wind that day was a destructive force, but the nature of the spirit is very different to that. In Greek, the language of the New Testament, the word used for the ordinary wind is anemos. We get the word anemometer from it. But in connection with the Holy Spirit, a second word, pneuma, is always used, which can mean wind, but also breath or spirit. Therefore, we can describe the Holy Spirit as the wind or the breath of God. And when he breathes into people's lives, things change. And one of the biggest changes that happens is when people first decide to trust and follow Jesus. A process occurs in their lives, which Jesus described as being born again. Here's what he said to somebody called Nicodemus. I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. The Holy Spirit brings spiritual life to those that trust Jesus. It's quite amazing to see the change that occurs in somebody's life when they start to change from asking lots of questions to realizing that God is real and trusting and following him for themselves. I compare it to turning on the lights. The Holy Spirit has a massive effect on how we think and what we believe. But there's more to the Holy Spirit than this. Because when we decide to follow Jesus, he becomes a part of our lives. He's with us all the time. What's more, the Spirit empowers God's people to understand what he's about, to speak and listen to him, to live a life that reflects Jesus to serve and honour God and to speak about him to others. He gives us the means to serve God through spiritual gifts, which are supernatural enablements so that we may serve God more effectively in the world and in the church. As with the wind, sometimes we experience the Holy Spirit as a gentle breeze refreshing us. Other times we see him working in power, healing people, changing situations, transforming lives. If you're not a Christian, but what I've said has sparked some interest in you, then ask the Holy Spirit to open up your understanding that you might realize that he's real and follow Jesus. If you're already a Christian, then I lay down this challenge to you. How much of the Holy Spirit can people see in your life in a way that convinces them that God is real? If they can't see him in you, or you know that you've quenched the Spirit, then ask the Holy Spirit to change you, to empower you, in order that you might reflect Jesus in your life and in your worship. And ask the Holy Spirit to empower you with his gifts in order that you might serve God and honour Jesus in every way in your life.